Very good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Estadio Alfredo Di Stefano here in Madrid for the UEFA Women's Champions League first leg quarterfinal between Real Madrid and the Spanish champions Barcelona, Spain's finest on show tonight in the first meeting between the two sides in Europe's elite competition. Well, the hosts booked their place in the quarter-final by finishing in second place in their group while the reigning European champion sailed through a group that consisted of Arsenal and Hoffenheim. Well, the winners of this tie will play either Arsenal or Wolfsburg in the semi-final. Well, Real Madrid are in red-hot form after winning eight of their last nine matches in all competitions. However, the only defeat in that period came against today's opponents just over a week ago, with Barcelona cruising to a 5-0 victory. Well, Barcelona have already secured silverware, picking up their seventh league title win this season earlier this month with six matches to spare. Well, Lucy Ward, former Leeds United forward, is alongside me. And Lucy, it's been a highly anticipated El Clasico in the Champions league tonight Real Madrid have been beaten by Barcelona on all five previous meetings but is tonight their biggest test yet considering what's at stake yeah I think so I think Real Madrid have done really really well to get to the knockout stages of the first attempt in the Champions League they have done really well in the league under the, the new manager but in terms of the results until they meet Barcelona and I think Barcelona are that much more in front of a lot of teams most teams in Europe at the moment the power has shifted to Barcelona and it makes it very very difficult to beat them but they're at home it's the first leg Real Madrid and they'll be hoping for a positive result and considering that Barcelona have already claimed the title in their domestic league Real Madrid will be of course hoping that they can be the ones to progress further in the Champions League against the reigning champions of course Barcelona looking to retain their title at the first time of asking after lifting the trophy last season. Real Madrid currently fifth in the Spanish league, a huge 26 points behind Barcelona. They do have a game in hand. Uh, despite this though, they've lost just once in the last 10 in the league, most recently beating Tenerife 2-0 on Saturday. Well, Lucy, when you look at Real Madrid's team and their recent form, their last three defeats since November in all competitions have been against Barcelona. They've beaten every other team. The only team they can't get past is this Barcelona side. Will they have to have a different game plan going into this one? Yeah, well, I've had a look how they're going to set up, and I don't know whether they, they might be a little bit more compact. You have to be against this Barcelona team because they stifle you by passing and they stifle you from pressing. So you need to make sure that you close the lines up. It's a sort of a 4-2-3 one by thing but probably drops back into a 4-5-1 and just trying to stop the progression of Barcelona but Barcelona play so f freely and they're so fluid in terms of the front six the only the, the only players that sit in the center backs and everybody else will move forward and just keep the opposition at arm's length right in their own defensive pass it's so difficult to play against still plenty of fans out in force waiting to see some of their favorite players in action on this pitch here tonight. Barcelona are missing a, a few players in the sense of Mariona Caldente, Asisat Oshuala, Lika Martins, all injured and all not available to play. But they have a pretty big depth of squad, don't they, Lucy? It doesn't seem like it'll affect them that much today. Yeah, I mean, the basis of the Barcelona team over the last few years has been from their academy and, and youngsters coming through. But then they, they bring quality forwards in I think in that sort of final third and that's just like the icing on top of the cake and and like you say if somebody is Oshual is missing you know then Rolf will come in and and they know that they have to play well to keep the shirt and I think that sort of level of competition within the squad helps to raise the standards as well because you know that you will not get a sniff of playing and keep on in a lot of minutes if you don't play well when you do have the shirt well the two sides last met back in March second week of March winning 5-0 Barcelona at home as with goals thanks to two goals from Alexia Puteas Patrick Guijarro and Jenny Amoso also on the score sheet too but here we go then as the teams come out a piece of history the first El Clasico in the Women's Champions League over the two legs a new chapter will be written in the histories of these two famous clubs 
Barcelona have been a team that can't be stopped this season and their form in Europe's elite competition has been no different. A perfect group stage campaign saw them cruise through to the knockouts and today the visitors will look to compete their sixth win over the hosts. European newbies Real Madrid have taken their inaugural Champions League campaign by storm, beating England's Manchester City in the qualifiers and securing the second place spot in the group stages. Their biggest test awaits tonight. A huge night for both teams. Real Madrid never beaten Barcelona before. It would be quite the time to do it in front of their home fans in the quarterfinal of the Champions League. Well, let's take a look at the Real Madrid team then. Alberto Turil names four changes to his side that beat Tenerife on Saturday. Babette Peter, Lucia Rodriguez, Olga Carmona and Mighty Oroz all come in as Kenti Robles, Ivana Andres, Caroline Muller and Nahikari Garcia all drop to the Real Madrid bench. Esther Gonzalez is Madrid's leading goal scorer in the Spanish league this season with 13 goals. She starts up top for Real Madrid tonight. The referee this evening, Lina Letovara from Finland. And of course, there is the addition of VAR in this game. João Pinheiro from Portugal is on hand if they need to consult today. Well, this is the team for Barcelona. Two changes to his side that beat Sociedad in the Copa de la Reina last week for Jonathan Giraldes' side. Andrea Pereira and Jenny Hermoso come in for Claudia Pina and Ingrid Engen, who dropped to the bench. Patrick Guijarro was the first ever scorer in a women's Clásico with the opening goal in Barcelona's 4-0 league success in Madrid back in October 2020. She starts today for Barcelona. The two captains going through their pre-match rituals Alexia Puteas and Babette Peter. Well, Jonathan Giraldes has seen plenty of success at his side. And there's a new man in charge for Real Madrid. Alberto Torreil took charge at the end of November, halfway through Real Madrid season. We've seen an upturn in form as well, Real Madrid. The only team they've not been able to beat is Barcelona. The players and the spectators here in the ground will take a moment's silence after the sad passing of Luis Martinez Lafourgu, Real Madrid's former vice president, who sadly passed away. Almost ready to get underway in the first leg of a very important quarter-final between Real Madrid and Barcelona. It'll be the visitors who will take the first kick. Barcelona have been the team to beat so far. They've had a perfect group stage campaign. They'll be hoping to go all the way and keep hold 
of that Champions League title which they won last season. And it's Barcelona who get us underway. They've made light work of Europe's elite so far and they are looking to take a step closer to retaining their European title and it will taste all the sweeter if they can beat their great rivals on the way. Real Madrid know they are the underdogs tonight. A win would be their first ever over Barcelona and it would be the perfect start to their Champions League knockout clash. Straight away Barcelona looking to try and get ahead. But Lucy, it's one of the tasty ties in this season's Champions League knockout rounds, isn't it? But Barcelona, as we've heard, have dominated in this fixture. Do you see it going any other way tonight? Um, I think over the, 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 the two legs it will definitely be Barcelona going through. However, you have to say that under under this man, Real Madrid have really made good steps, positive steps and quality steps in the in the Champions League, and they'll be really proud of that. And they've, there's no pressure on them because they're not expected to win this tie, so they've just got to go into it with full of confidence. Real Madrid were complaining. They thought the ball had gone out, and now they've conceded the foul there with Diego Rodriguez. Yeah, I think that this Real Madrid started and threw some bodies forward and then obviously Barcelona got a hold of it. You just need to be really careful about making good decisions, Real Madrid, I think this evening and not giving away set pieces in situations like this that Barcelona are quite clever the way they work them. Jonathan Rialdez, the Barcelona boss watching on. So Carolina Graham Hansen, Mappy Leon, the two players who stand over this. Real Madrid just making sure they've got everything in place to try and stop this first attack coming in from Barcelona. So it will be Mappy Leon to take this. Swings it in. The header was there, but. It was Alexia Puteas who was able to get a touch on it. Omati oh, trying to get through. Kihara also able to get the ball through, but blocked in the end by Svava, and they've got a goal kick, and they dealt with that pretty well. Yeah, they did. It was actually the, they ended up with players spare, Barcelona, but just couldn't get any sort of contact towards goal but Real Madrid are working so hard you can even see that in the opening minutes in the central midfield areas to try and close down Barcelona and ensure that they don't have that much time on the ball well, I know Wahabi is not happy with that decision that it's gone into the way of Real Madrid for a throw in Here's Sophie's father, new signing from Wolfsburg, who came to Real Madrid in January of this year. Very experienced player, has won Danish Cup, Swedish Cup and the German Cup. She's hoping to emulate the same style as well in Spain. First, she'll have to try and get past Barcelona, who really are the top, top team. And the only team that Real Madrid can't seem to beat. Rodriguez. Peter. Bet Peter was on the end of an own goal in the last meeting between Barcelona, which they lost 5 0. Donosa. To Galvez, and here's. Javiera. It's good for Real Madrid that they get some quality possession in their own half. It's a nice looking ball over. Looking for Gonzalez. Couldn't quite control it. Mapoleon did well in the end to try and get that ball away. Well, that's the space left. Being, you know, when Real Madrid get it and Barcelona are throwing bodies forward. That, that sort of run, they have to work so hard up front, Gonzalez and Moroz. Napoleon being put under a little bit of pressure here. Del Castillo trying to fight the ball back. 
Giharo getting in on the action too. Mateus being held back there by Abiera. Hermoso gets away from Galvez. Rolfo trying to find the ball in, but it was picked up by Svava. And now Real Madrid will try and get forward. Svava keeps on going. Nice ball into Gonzalez. She's got Oroz and Del Castillo in the area. You actually started really well. Real Madrid, yes, they gave a, a set piece away, but they're pressing quite high. And even then, when Barcelona play past the press, that they make each other defend well, getting it up the pitch cleverly. Good passes, and you can just putting players under pressure. I know that was probably a foul against Puteas, but you know, even good players, if you if you put them under pressure physically, it's not so easy for them to pass it well. Iharo couldn't quite control that ball and was taken away from Abiera. Wahabi. Here's Rolfert. Now Mapi Leon. Rolfo trying to skip away, and in the end, the foul comes in from Mighty Oroz. Yeah, Madrid players are not giving the Barcelona players any sort of second on the ball, actually fouling them and just getting in their faces. And that's the way you have to play against this Barcelona team. You cannot let them pass the ball easily. Well, despite this being the first ever Champions League meeting between the two sides, of course, these two sides will know each other very well. Having met each other on a few occasions, although Real Madrid being a relatively new team have come against each other already five previous occasions. Pedes all taken away from it by Abiera. He popped that ball into a bit of space, but in the end it was picked up by Pereira. Here's Pateas again. Loose ball finds. Gonzalez, she's got to go on her own. There's an option to her left. Will she shoot? She does. Olga Carmona has scored for Real Madrid against all the odds. It's the home side who strike first in the first leg of the quarterfinals in the Champions League. Real Madrid won, Barcelona nil. Well, you can't say that they don't deserve that Real Madrid in the way that they started the game. Far too relaxed Barcelona, the way that they play. They give the ball away and straight away there's a Real Madrid player on the ball. And it's a brilliant play there by Gonzalez. She holds it well. A terrific finish. And it's, the defending is not very good. I mean, they don't have to do that much defending Barcelona in the games that they do play. But when you do get the ball in front of goal, you have to make sure it's on target. And Carmona did that. She held the nerve cool in front of Panos and tucked it away and, and that's a surprise however if you'd watch the first bit of this game you know that the way that Real Madrid started really really well and pressed well high up the pitch well a perfect start for Real Madrid and for Olga Carmona who gets her second goal in the Champions League And the goal stands. And now Barcelona are the team that have got work to do. They'll look for a response straight away. Happy with the ball through to Rolfe. Mapillion. Here's Hermoso. You can hear the fans in the stadium every time that Real Madrid get it or they win the ball back. They're loud, they're trying to support the team and that's exactly what's needed. Gihara. The 
Mateus. Now Leon again. Spotted a bit of space opening up here for Graham Hansen. Crosses the ball into the area. Away by Galvez, but back out to Graham Hansen. Gets away from Svava, but not the second time. Carmona. Svava started the game really well. She's defended well when she needs to one-on-one, -on -one, but she's also got the ball up the pitches and passes it well. It's a good start from Real Madrid. Here is Sophie Svava. Sophie Svava making her first appearance for Real Madrid in the Champions League. Graham Hansen again trying to pop that ball into a bit of space in the area. Again, Svava in the way. Bon Mati. Pereira. Stopped by Carmona, and here's Zonosa. Hermoso. Deas all into the box, but it was straight away headed away by Oroz. That's good play, good defending. And I say again, I don't care how good a player you are, if you put under physical pressure as soon as you get hold of the ball, they're not letting them even breathe for a second when they get the ball. Barcelona, it just means they're making mistakes, and Real Madrid are actually forcing the mistakes because they've started off physically really, really well. Peter, now Del Castillo, skipping away and looking for that ball through to Gonzalez, an important touch there to stop that ball coming through. And the only thing I would say is that you just need to be careful in transition, Real Madrid, and they're happy with his team start, that, that they are aware of the what ifs you know you lose the ball up the pitch are we covering because you know how Barcelona can pass this and get the ball up the pitch quickly but Barcelona probably expected Real Madrid to come out quickly but I think they do seem a little bit shocked with the start bon Mati. Well, it does set up for a really nice second leg tie if of course this game stays quite close and that will be quite the event with 90,000 tickets sold in Barcelona. And what a moment that will be for football and women's football too. The play continues, Real Madrid looking for a foul, but the referees waved it away. Del Castillo. Charging run forward to try and get away from Wahabi. A really confident start. The two sitting midfielders and the ten Oroz. They just well, as soon as they lose it, they try and win it back, but making good decisions in possession as well, and that helps. Castillo will pick this up and get away from Napoleon, who does in the end foul mighty Oroz. It's causing problems, Oroz. Didn't really need to make that challenge, just a little bit of frustration there. Just lunging in, Leon. I'm sure that's not how he expected. His first half to go, Jonathan Giraldez. So Teresa Aviera to take this for Real Madrid. A decent delivery in, out to Svava. Tried to get the cross in, but it was blocked in the end. By Torrejon.
Long throw, looking for Carmona. Came off the foot of a Barcelona player, so it will be a corner kick to Real Madrid. It's just a, a, a different difference in the level of intensity of both teams. And Barcelona started slow, I think. I don't know whether they underestimated how Real Madrid would start, but they're certainly at a higher tempo than Barcelona at the moment. Vieira with the corner kick in. The low driven shot was bobbling into the hands of Sandra Paños. Leon couldn't quite get that ball away because Del Castillo was in the way. Alzonosa. Here's Del Castillo. That's away from Wahabi. Looking to get away from Mapi Leon, but the block was in there from Puteas in the end. They're just struggling to get out, Barcelona. And pressing so well. Real Madrid bodies up the pitch and just need to be careful to leave it open at the back because. Barcelona have not got into their passing rhythm yet, and that's all because of the way that Real Madrid are defending against them. Nice ball through to Rolfe. Cuts it back, and in the end, that was a wasted opportunity. Yeah, it looked like Rolfe had just strayed offside as the initial ball went in behind, but you can see just doing something a little bit different. You know, making a run forward, carrying the ball forward. Yeah, I think it was. I think that was exactly what was intended from that corner, but again, they're getting themselves up the pitch, Real Madrid. Seventeen minutes played, but it's the home side, Real Madrid, who lead thanks to that eight minute goal from Olga Carmona. A lovely finish too. Barcelona still not able to respond to going down early on well, they know the key players in this Barcelona team Pateas one of them has not really got going either in this game just have been flooded with players but just need to be wary of yellow cards and a bit of needle between the two sets of players that Madrid have really come into this game fully focused and the team with the momentum at the moment. Jenny Amoso, one of the players that ready for Barcelona to receive this if it comes to it. Happy Leon to take. Bon Mati. Now Wahabi. A poor touch from Fridolina Rolfo makes it go out for a Real Madrid throw. A bit rattled, Barcelona. They do have football all their own way most of the time, whether it's in the league or in the Champions League, in particularly last season. And this is the way, and it's only 18 or so minutes into it, but this is a way to play against them. But keeping this up, maintaining it for, for 90 minutes and not making any mistakes, which is really what Real Madrid have to do. It's like a problem with the... Referee Lina Letevara's watch. Looks like it's all working okay. She spotted that they've taken a couple of strides forward, Real Madrid. My dear Oroz, just trying a look. Lucia Rodriguez with the throw. So Nossa finds Svava. I think even from the start, Pien, that Barcelona weren't really pressing high like they normally do. And because they started off in that sort of lull way of playing, it just gave Madrid 
that momentum. Barcelona at the moment just edging the possession statistics. There is Leon. Paul Mati back to Pereira. Over to Wahabi. Building up to try and find themselves an opportunity, Barcelona, because they've been kept relatively at bay so far by the home side. Yeah, this is more like their passing patterns now. Trying to suffocate the opposition in their own defensive half. Bomati through to Graham Hansen. Headed away by Galvez. Kept alive by Guijaro. Here's Jenny Amoso looking for a ball through to Puteas, but in the end, Lucia Rodriguez able to play it safe and play it out. Yeah, it's better passing from Barcelona. They got their rhythm going. And again, Real Madrid are defending well on the edge of the area and being as compact as they possibly can. Bonmati. Wahabi. As Puteas has got a few players surrounding her, making sure she doesn't get through, and the referee spotted it, and they've got a free kick, Barcelona. Yeah, probably one of the most dangerous players in the world, Puteas, but when you've got two or three opponents around you, it's so difficult to play. Yes, that was a, a free kick, but that's obviously the tactic. We'll have to try and keep her quiet. Alexa Puteas has already got five goals in the Champions League group stages. Here she is now on the ball. Puteas weaving away inside the area. Picked up by Wahabi. Rolfe. To Bonmati, but picked up here by Rodriguez. Gonzalez trying to keep hold of that ball, but Leon. Yeah, she did well there, Gonzalez. I thought that she was probably fouled during that little bit of play, and she got a little bit annoyed at the end of it. But just that's that's where Real Madrid. That's key when they do win it back that they have got that outlet that Gonzalez is not sucked right back in there. That there is a person to pass to when the when the ball back because they have the most possession, Barcelona, whether they're winning or losing. Pereira. Torrejon. Now Barcelona coming forward. Wahabi with the ball in, looking for Hermoso. Back out to Puteas. Puteas can try and drive through, but there was a wall of black shirts in the way, not letting her get any way through. And again, Lucia Rodriguez making the all-important block. Yeah, and she's getting a little bit frustrated, Puteas. She's just trying to do it all by herself when perhaps when she's got two or three players around her, it means that one of her, at least one or two of her teammates are free. So they defended the edge of the box really well, Real Madrid. Graham Hansen. Kiharo almost getting pushed off the ball there. It's another throw to Barcelona. And as always, you can see the statistic there already double what Real Madrid have done in terms of pass completion but that will probably quadruple by the end of this game won't it certainly will they do like to keep the ball but it has to have some purpose and we've seen that from them all foot just trying to squeeze it away into a grab Giharo decided to shoot 
It was well spotted by Misa, who went down and able to save that. Oh, Misa's such a strong character for this Real Madrid team. She'd be quite happy to get herself involved. That's probably the first involvement she's had in terms of having a save to make, which is not bad, considering how many minutes we've had already in this game and how dominant Barcelona usually are. Bonmati. Here's Rolfe. Peter with a strong foot in to get that ball away. The longer it goes on, where you're actually defending well and offering a little bit of a threat, the more confident you become as well as a team. Ball in from Graham Hansen. Back out to Rolfe. It's Kiharo again. Now Bonmati. Need to turn and try and get a bit of space. It was blocked in a way by Gos Galvez. Ball in and there's Hermoso with a header. Yeah, you would have put a lot of money on Hermoso getting that header on target there, but just getting into their rhythm now. Barcelona, good ball into the box and just did enough there. Rodriguez just to ease Hermoso out, just using her body. It's good defending. Well, Barcelona had a perfect group stage campaign getting to this point. They conceded just the one goal. And that was in that 4-1 home win against Arsenal back in October. This is just the second goal that Barcelona have conceded in the Champions League campaign so far and just proves how difficult it really is to get past a team like Barcelona and try and get that goal. And it was all thanks to her, Olga Carmona. And it was a fabulous assist also from Esther Gonzalez. And what a finish that is too. Yeah, she held the ball up really well, Gonzalez. Waited for the run of Carmona and she has to finish it well and she did it. And when you're playing against a team that's better than you are beating you quite a lot and you've not beaten them yet you have to split the game up into segments and the opening segment whether it's 15 minutes or 20 minutes that you don't concede Real Madrid managed to get that goal and then you'll just work to defend but try and offer that threat as well and then obviously if they can keep that going into the second half they may try and get another goal but they'll be quite happy with this start well, the goal kick didn't quite reached the player that Misa had intended to and the ball was transferred back into Barcelona's possession. Puteas. Here's Wahabi. Now Hermoso. Boros. Nice ball in to Olga Carmona. Esther Gonzalez is charging forward as well as Sophie Svava. Decides to go back to Sonoza. Here's Abiera. Rodriguez. And now Real Madrid are doing what Barcelona usually do to them. I do think that Barcelona have come into this game thinking that they just have to turn up. Flicked on here by Gonzalez. It won't count anyway because the flag was up. Yeah, just saying, Pia. Barcelona started the game as if all they needed to do was turn up to, to win. And it's so difficult to change that mindset as you get into a game and you're really in a game, a physical game, a game of individual duels that you're really not winning the majority of. She's causing problems, Gonzalez. It was a tight call, too, for the offside. They are calling them early, though, the officials, aren't they? That's pretty incredible, isn't it, what Barcelona have done already, being able to call themselves the Spanish champions with six games still left to play. I mean, the, the, the league is actually quite a good league, a good standard. It's just that they have been so much better than everybody else. El Castillo. Some trickery to try and get away from a couple of the Barcelona players that were trying to stop her in her tracks, and that's a big challenge there from Bonmati. 
And the first yellow card of the game. They actually haven't got the room to breathe in that midfield battle like they usually do. Usually the rotations are excellent. They get themselves on the ball, they free each other up, but they've just not got into any sort of rhythm. And one more tee there. Caught on the ball, really. Had to make that challenge. Carmona did really well. Got the little dink over the top. It just meant... Bomati went in late, but neither of those three central midfielders we usually see completely dictate everything about a game, and, and they're just not having it their own way at all. And that is full credit to the way that Real Madrid has started this game. Well, it's Olga Carmona who's down for Real Madrid, and that man Alberto Toril will be pretty pleased with the way his side have come out in this first half. I think that first goal within 10 minutes of starting this game. He only became manager at the end of November. He was able to see an upturn in this Real Madrid team. You can already see the difference. Obviously, the mindset. These players have come to this game thinking we can get something from it. You can see every single one of them believe, and that has to come from the manager. He instills that, and he's obviously had a real, really good effect on, on these players since he's been here. You see the results. They've not got... The results against Barcelona, but every other team that they've played against, they've, they've been dominant. Loza with the ball in. Finds Gonzalez. Back out to Del Castillo. Still not cleared away. Mapelion with a header trying to get that ball away. Hermoso picks this up. And in the end, Torrejon. And try and get that ball and an important kick away. And Barcelona cannot relax just because of the way that Gonzalez is getting herself on the ball. And she really is a tricky customer to deal with. She moves it well, she's tricky, she front foot, she face up an opponent. comes in there on to Graham Hansen from Sophie's father. The press from Real Madrid at times, it's the, the coordination is brilliant and they know exactly what they're doing. Everybody knows the roles, they know when they're going to go, they know the triggers and they're actually trying to stifle Barcelona like Barcelona do to other teams. Here's Wahabi. Now Puteas. A long way to go, but he'll be really happy. The opening part of this half. Hermoso. A little bit of space to run into, but ball rebounded off, and it will be at Barcelona corner. She's had quite a bit of work to do, hasn't she, Lucio Rodriguez? Now our first corner for Barcelona in this match. Decent delivery in, but straight into the hands of Misa, and who holds on to that tightly? We need to have... A a strong goalkeeper behind you, one that will come out and grab. That's a, a poor delivery, really, from Barcelona, but Misa has proved herself to be a really strong character. We need everybody playing at the top of the game, and so far they have in this game. Bomati. There she is again, Aitana Bomati, looking to get that ball over the top. Pateas was there, as was Wahabi. Now Del Castillo's being held back here. And another yellow card coming out. This time for Leda Wahabi. You can see the frustrations in her face because Del Castillo was getting away. You know what? Whenever Del Castillo, Gonzalez, Oros gets on the ball, they can't defend against them. They're really struggling to defend. And that quite a lot of that is frustration, but really composed, running with the ball, making good decisions, and forcing the opponent to foul you is 
excellent play. Peter with the ball over the top. Well, Carmona is claiming her innocence, but she gets a yellow card on that. Challenge on to Caroline Graham Hansen. That was a late one. And there was a difference between being strong and in the faces of opposition, and that was quite late. Graham Hansen had got past her and said she got the ball, she did, but at the same time she got the foot of Graham Hansen. I can't disagree with that from the referee. Leon. It's under 10 minutes to go until half time. As it stands, Real Madrid in control of this game with that one goal lead. They've done everything they needed to do to keep Barcelona at bay so far. And also with a nice touch to get through. Now Oroz, Carmona is there. Javiera. Oroz back to Svava. That's a good play, they're not panicking in possession. It was a good break, terrific touch. And it's an also to get Progress the ball right up the pitch, but then they're trying to keep it. Del Castillo taken down there by Wahabi. Wahabi's not having a good game, not started this game well at all. She's not particularly as involved as she wants to going forward, but she struggled defensively as well. It's just that little one two touch inside. I was claiming that she got shoved in the face a bit. El Castillo. Free kick to Real Madrid, and it's Nadia Zanosa to take this. Ball comes in, flicked on. Gonzalez is there. Gonzalez! Almost made it two for Real Madrid. What an opportunity that was. Perhaps the best of the chance of this half. Oh, it's a terrific ball in in the first place, but. Her ability in tight areas, she's got a little bit of luck there, but she just controls the ball really well when there's players around her. Her failed to deal with it, and that's a whisker away from being 2-0. Hermosa. Taken away by Sparva. So nothing. Rodriguez is asking for it and gets it too. And growing in confidence as well. The passes are working out. The movement is very good in the final third. And the longer this game goes on in this half, the more confidence these players have that what they're doing is working and the game plan's working. Vieira. Alexis Gutierrez can't quite believe the referee has called that. I think some of the Barcelona players were thinking that it might have been a handball. Looked like she controlled it with a chest, Lucy. Yeah, it did. It was a terrific touch, and she has been everywhere. Well, here she is again. Ball through to Gonzalez. Tried to take the touch straight away because she saw Panos was off a line. Here's Del Castillo. Really, very nearly caught out there. Barcelona. And long ball over the top beats the whole of the defense and Panos really did well in the end to save it and probably should have been a better shot but he's just mixing it up there as, as well Real Madrid and they've got the ball back again now Rolfe trying to get away and it just looks like Barcelona are feeling the pressure now yeah the opening 40 minutes shows any team in Europe how to play against this Barcelona team in terms of putting them under pressure from minute one 
And that sort of physical pressure changes the decision making, affects the decision making of e even excellent players. And that's exactly what Real Madrid have done. And whether they can get to half time and keep the at 1 0, but they're dominant when they do get the ball. Barcelona have scored in their last 83 matches. A spell that stretches all the way back to August of 2020. His father. Johansson. Now Bomati. Leaves it for Graham Hansen, tries to drive it back. Now by Zonoza. Zonoza got forward as left back from Real Madrid and just left it quite open, but that's only failed to capitalise on it. But this is the effort from Gonzalez, probably could have got a little bit more power behind that. It's a corner. To Barcelona, Graham Hansen will take back to Torrejon. He sends it into the box, and the header was on from Pereira. hard to believe isn't it that this is Real Madrid's first ever season competing in Europe they were able to knock Manchester City out in the qualification rounds and beating a big team like that will of course have given them confidence throughout this campaign and they had a pretty decent campaign too only lost to PSG in the group stages meaning they came into this second in the group Perhaps got the most unfavourable tie coming <laughs> against Barcelona. I think so, but they, they started this game really well, working at a really high energy level. Like I said earlier in the half, whether they can keep that up for 90 minutes is another thing, but in terms of getting to this stage in the game, it's been almost a perfect game plan. That was good work back from Gonzalez and Del Castillo trying to keep the ball alive. Picked up here by Pateas and now Kihara. Is there more to Pereira and now Guijarro Torrejon Bomati I see him also going deep just trying to encourage the midfielders to go beyond Graham Hansen, long looping ball over. So Habi who picks it up. Misa was there at the near post. They haven't really had the usual smart patterns of play, Barcelona. No, we've seen him also drop a couple of times. Rolf has just been running down dead ends down that left hand side well marshalled at the back midfield I think mostly the centre midfielders have not had enough time on the ball for their liking Vieira back to Peter now Svava Zornosa Two minutes will be added on in the first half. Gonzalo's chasing this ball down. He's to try and catch out the defenders of Barcelona. 
Wahabi. Rolfo. Piteas with a nice ball in, looking for Rolfo again. Peter spotted that, and that was a really good clearance away. That's better by Rolfo. She lays it off inside and makes that run. Piteas knew uh, exactly where she was going to put it, where the run was going to go. Esther Gonzalez driving down. He popped that ball into a bit of space, hoping that her pace will catch up with it. In the end, Sandra Banos able to kick that ball away. Picked up here by Oroz. And she tried to turn, she was fouled. It's just frustrating in everything that Barcelona are doing out of possession. Don't really need to foul there, but Real Madrid will take it. So perhaps a, a thought with Barcelona that because they have beaten them so many times, they didn't expect this to happen. Mona with the ball in. It was blocked by Torrejon and out for a corner kick to Real Madrid. How much this will mean to this Spanish side, Real Madrid, if they can get their first win over Barcelona. It will be a historic moment too. They've got to get through a whole second half though. Corner kick comes in. Gonzalez claiming she was being fouled in the penalty area. Peter with the ball over, and that'll be left. And with that was the final action of the first half. A huge round of applause and cheer from the home fans because what a performance their side have put in. And it was all thanks to that one, Olga Carmona, who was able to get the opening goal for Real Madrid within the opening 10 minutes of the game. It was Esther Gonzalez who was charging forward and it was fantastic assist from her laid it on a plate for Olga Carmona. And it was a fabulous finish to get it past Sandra Panos to make it 1-0. And Lucy, for you, what a first half. That has been Real Madrid really, really stopping any sort of threats from Barcelona. Yeah, I think Real Madrid started the better. I, I honestly think Barcelona thought that they could turn up and just turn up and, and win and, and not expect Real Madrid to play the way that they have played. They started off physical high tempo, lots of energy, they didn't give any room for Barcelona to get into any sort of passing rhythm and they've used the ball well in the final third, they've not just kicked it away, they've, they've found players, Gonzalez has played well, obviously Carmona got, got the goal but even though Barcelona have had the majority of the possession, they've not done with it the, you know, the, the quality that, that uh, Real Madrid have got. So. Real Madrid, although I would still suspect that at the end of the second leg they will not progress, but this is a real step forward for them in terms of a 45 minutes where they have got themselves 1-0 in front against Barcelona. That's all they had to, to do in this, this, this first half and they grew in confidence as the, as the first half gone on. Barcelona, they need to have a real think at, at half-time. They need to um, be more aggressive, much, much more aggressive second half. Half time, Real Madrid 1, Barcelona 0. It's impossible to take hold of the world spotlight overnight. Create your own uniform. Be a cover model, a powerful athlete, or compete as a trans woman. Impossible? No. I am possible.
How you doing, everybody? We are in North London, deep, deep Guna territory, and we are here to meet two of Arsenal's top, top players. Bit of footwork there. So, Leah, four years now, you're very much settled here. How are you finding it here? Is everything good? You're happy and everything? I hope you are. I am happy. I'm really happy. Um, since the first moment I joined Arsenal, I really enjoyed playing football here. I think I have great players around and, yeah, great club. And I think we, yeah, we built a great team and can compete with the best in Europe. Oh, it's so brilliant. What a wonderfully taken free kick that is. I'm really happy to be here. It uh, feels like it's a really professional club. I have got really good help from the teammates and uh, good players around me, so, so I really like it here. She's done it again, Stina Black Stenius on target three times in the qualifiers. This is her first goal at the group stages. Your name, I was thinking your name sounds, it sounds like something out of Sparta. Yeah, it's my, it's my dad who made it up. Yeah, he lived uh, at a farm called Blöksta, and then uh, my granddad's name is Sten, and then Ius is a pretty common thing to just add. So then it was Blöksten. So you can Blackstein. just create your surname? You yeah, he did. Yeah, so, so it's just me, my brother, and my dad. Uh, I call Blöksten. Yeah. I think my name's so ordinary. Larson plays it back to Black Stenius. Can she get on the end of this and poke it along? Yeah. 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 That was sick, that was sick, that was sick, that was sick, that was mad. It's very difficult for the girls to get to play a lot of football when they're young. You have to play with the boys and stuff. How old was you when you started Stina firstly? I started when I was six and seven mm -hmm. and I played for the same team until I was 16, I think. Wow. What positions did you start out? I always played as a striker. What, Never just, tried something else. Just scoring goals, you just loved it. What about you, Leah? Did you was it easy to play like you could play at school? Did you have to just play with boys or was you playing with predominantly girls? To play with girls was a bit difficult mm. because there were just not enough teams yet in Yauf level, so I, I played with boys until I was 17. In each country, the possibilities for girls were different. Mm. For example, in Switzerland, and 10 years ago, we didn't have um, great opportunity with young girls. Now it changed. I've been watching women's football for a long time. I, I remember when I started playing in 85, you know, my dear friend Hope Powell, Marianne Spacey, Brenda Sampari, all those girls used to play, and I sometimes used to go and watch Fulham. But like, obviously now, you know what I mean? It's, it's ramped right up. Lovely ball. Miedemar's in here! It's a clever turn. Miedemar's there again for the hat trick. One of my favorite all-time artists, Kelly Smith. Kelly Smith is amazing. I'd like to think that I was, I compare myself to how Kelly was. She was a brilliant finisher. It's like Viv and Dennis. I think they, they're kind of the same. And I was, I was thinking Santi Cazorla, Mana, Mana Iwabuchi. Yeah, man. Well, here comes Iwabuchi firing into the top corner. Well, that's special. What's she like? Is she just like always really smiley and happy? She's just someone you want to hug and you want to be. You want her to be happy because she, you know, like she just deserves. It. She's just yeah. everybody deserves it, but she really deserves it. How do you find playing at the Emirates? Do you like playing at the Emirates? Obviously, it's a great place to play, but how do you find it? What's it like? I think as a kid you dream about playing in the biggest stadiums, so it is great that we have finally the opportunity to play in these stadiums. I love it. Um, having thousands of people in the stands. It's more and more we do it, it's more we get used to it, and I hope it's the future of women's football as well. Yes, absolutely. Sends it into the box, here's also get the goal back as well. And Miedemar just arriving at the back post, poke it home. Lovely ball in there, there's the header!
Melissa Ortiz, former professional football player and Olympian for the Colombian women's national team. Today, I am here with the great Friolino Rolfo, attacker for FC Barcelona and the Swedish national team. And this is the matchup. Hello, Friolina. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We're going to kick things off with something called the kickoff. Um, and this is just be a little fun. So I'm Colombian and in Colombia, we love music. So since I'm a music type of person, what is your go-to song at the moment that pumps you up? It depends in which kind of mode I am. But at the moment, I'm listening to a singer called Sena Busse. She's my go-to when I'm listening before games and stuff like that. I'm getting motivated. If you open your phone, what is the back screen image? So mine is of my fiancé and I. What is the, your background? Yeah, it's my um, my boyfriend as well. I show it like this. Nice. So <laughs> It's a nice one because it's a, a really great view when we lived in Wolfsburg. So you see like the, the nature and then he's sitting there with his back and it's just a, a nice picture that I really like. Nice. So I'm morning hours right now in New York City. So I'm enjoying some some coffee. So this could be if we could be friends or not. Are you a coffee or tea person? Coffee for sure. Nice. So we, we're probably friends. <laughs> All right. Apart from football, what is your favorite hobby? When I have time off, I really love to to travel or yeah, I would say travel or food. Like I love cooking or going to restaurants. So that might be my hobby. <laughs> And so you recently arrived in Barcelona. How is your Spanish going? Good so far. It's it's a hard language to to learn because it's completely different from Swedish and German that I read before. So it's a challenge, but I'm starting to understand more and more. So this is your fourth language that you're learning? Yes. What has been the hardest part about learning Spanish, uh, especially like on the pitch? I think the hardest part here is that they speak really fast. So it's even though I get some words, it's hard to get the whole meaning. If you were going to go to a coffee shop in Barcelona, how would you order your coffee? Hola. Para mí un café con leche, por favor, or something like that. I'm Eric Austin. I'm a model and a dancer from my living room chip magazine covers. I make my own rhythm. The industry has to keep up. I was born this way. This. My story is not impossible because I am possible. Real Madrid, the leaders at half time in this quarter final first leg clash in the Champions League against the current Champions League title holders, Barcelona. What a first half we had as well. Real Madrid really able to keep Barcelona, the Spanish title holders as well, really at bay. They've hardly had any true opportunities. You have to say Real Madrid had the better of the opportunities in the first half. Esther Gonzalez off the post with one of her chances, but it was Olga Carmona who was able to create a fabulous finish, get it past the hands of Sandra Panos and make it 1-0 in the opening 10 minutes of the first half. And Lucy, what are you expecting from the second half? You've got to hope if you're a Real Madrid fan that you can keep up with this 1-0 lead because they have been working hard for it. Yeah, I, I think Barcelona will come out and they, they have to be a lot smarter. They have to move the ball quicker because they're obviously getting pressed. I'm not sure that Real Madrid's press will be as intense in the second half. Maybe they may sit on this 1-0 lead. It'd be difficult for them to, to continue to, to work at such a the high level, but they have the confidence. Barcelona, I, I, I can't see Barcelona playing any worse in the second half as they did in the first half. And I think that's all credit and everything to do with how Real Madrid set up. Well, there were a couple of yellow cards handed out in the first half as well. Aitana Bonmati and Leila Wahabi for Barcelona. Lucia Rodriguez didn't get a yellow card. Sorry, that was Olga Carmona who was on a yellow card for Real Madrid. But it was the two players for Barcelona that 
were shown a warning and they have to be careful because that would be the last thing you want is to be shown a red card and miss out on that second leg. Yeah, they were, they were getting um, slightly agitated as well, the Barcelona players, because it wasn't going their way and they were making silly fouls and giving free kicks away in dangerous positions. And Gonzalez there, we can see, she is a, a thorn in the side of the defenders for Barcelona. They cannot do what they normally do and just shove the fullbacks right up the pitch and just sit with, you know, G Guijaro and the two centre-backs are the only ones at the back. That, that hasn't happened for Barcelona at the moment and they've not got into any sort of rhythm. Well, here come Real Madrid, ready and raring to go for the second half. They have a record of winning all four games when leading at half-time in the Champions League so far this season. They'll be hoping to continue that. They've got to try and go all the way in this game up against the Spanish giants. Barcelona, they've done it well in the first half. Can they do it again in the second half? It was Olga Carmona with the first and only goal so far in this match to put the home side ahead. Barcelona making a change straight away as well, looking to get themselves back in this game. Claudia Pina ready to come on. And it is Leila Wahabi who has made way. What do you make of that substitution? Well, she didn't play well for a start, Wahabi, which is probably one of the reasons why she's come off. I think it means that Rolfer has gone back into left back because I don't th really think Rolfer had a particularly good half either. So it had to make a change, I think, Giraldez, because his team really weren't playing well. But Real Madrid will just have to make sure that they are not loose in any sort of passes and they uh, keep as compact as possible because I'm sure they'll see a, a different type of Barcelona in this second half. And Claudio Pino was on the score sheet in Barcelona's last game against Real Sociedad in the cup. And Jonathan Giraldez will of course be hoping that she can be back on the score sheet again today to try and level things up for Barcelona. El Castillo trying to get through. Barcelona have the ball back in their possession and here's Leon. Back to Rolfe. Kiharo. Now Torejon. Bon Mati. He's getting urged off the ball there. And Carmona just egging on the fans that are watching on in the stands. Yeah, if they haven't worked out, they haven't got much time on the ball. Barcelona in the first half, they started again. And they're harrying and chasing Real Madrid and just forcing those mistakes. Alves, Aviera, nice turn to get around. Here's Del Castillo. All forward looking for a Ross. It was picked up by Pereira. Pereira had an absolutely unbelievable first half. One of the two city midfielders for Real Madrid. Defensively more so, but you see there she even has that, that turn and pass out wide. Rolfe. As you say, Lucy switched back to that left back position, which was being held by Wahabi. His father. Calvez now. Peter. Real 
Madrid not quite able to keep that in. They have options of their own as well, Real Madrid. They have to freshen up this squad in the second half. They've kept it the same as the first half so far, though. Pudeas. Rolfe. Well, the goalkeeper got a hand to it. Graham Hansen goes down. It looked like the ball was perhaps going out of play, but it ended up swinging in and forced the save from Misa. Yeah, I think Misa actually misjudged this. And touched it right into Graham Hansen. I'm not sure there was that much contact there. They were asking for a penalty. She, I don't think there's enough in that. Graham Hansen at the last minute realised that she got a little bit of a touch but it's a good ball in from Rolfe like I said the goalkeeper's actually done quite well in this game well they are checking it VAR that challenge on it was more like an obstruction than, than anything else which means that it wouldn't be a, a penalty surely well they are checking it the challenge on Graham Hansen looking at it a few times it's taking quite a while well she's been told to go and have a look I'm not surprised he's fuming by the way that I, his team has done absolutely incredible the first half and I'm not sure that there was enough contact on that for the referee's decision at the start when she first saw it from her position I'm not sure at all whether that there's a, it has to be enough, it's not just about the contact, it has to be enough contact for it to... That is a, not a natural way for Carol Graham Hansen to go down. That's not how you go down from there, so she obviously didn't get that much of contact. I don't know what you think, P. Well, it doesn't matter what I think, Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting on the fence. <laughs> but I see your point. She's going to give it because a little the bit of pressure. The contact was there. No ref. Penalty. Barcelona. VAR intervened. And an opportunity for the visitors to get themselves level. The referee was told to go and check it. You don't agree, Lucy? No, I don't think there was enough in it. I don't think there's enough. There was enough contact in there. As soon as the referee goes to the to the screen, you know exactly what she's been instructed for. Barcelona don't really need any help whatsoever to beat any team in Europe. They've got a little bit tonight. Alexia Puteas, the world's best footballer, will take this penalty kick for Barcelona. Misa. In goal for Real Madrid to try and keep her team ahead. Alexia Puteas from the spot. Teas steps up. 1-1. One, one. A perfect penalty from a perfect player. Alexia Puteas makes it all level for Barcelona. Real Madrid, who were on top for so much of the first half. VAR intervened and gave a penalty to Barcelona. It was perfectly put away by Alexia Puteas. Yeah, she did well there, Puteas, she waited until the goalkeeper's looking at the goalkeeper, making the move. And it takes nerves of steel to do that. 
I think there was a little bit of talking between them and she went to have a word with Misa afterwards. Now, how much will this affect Real Madrid's confidence? Barcelona have got themselves a leg, leg up back into this tie and you would expect them to go on and show their dominance. So Alexia Puteas with goal number 23 of the season, number six in the Champions League. This is a nice ball through to Gonzalez. Just looking to lob the goalkeeper. It's a chance though, Pien. And she's played well, but she just didn't make a good decision and snatched it at the edge of the box. She probably could have gone even further in, closer to goal. Bonmati, ball blocked by Del Castillo. What a second half we have on our hands now, all level. The more I think about that, Pete, the more I think that is absolutely a ridiculous penalty to give. Just the way that Caroline <laughs> Graham Hansen fell to the floor was not due to the contact, not due to the contact that she got, so therefore the contact was not enough to give a penalty. She basically threw herself to the ground. Well, it is very rare, isn't it, that if the referee gets sent to have a look at the screen that they stick to their original decision in this case that was the case where the referee went over changed her mind gave the penalty and i guess this is one of the moments where real madrid wished <laughs> that the yeah. video assistant referee wasn't in play it just gives barcelona an opportunity now to get their passing game going they've affected the confidence of real madrid and they can capitalize on that Pateas through to Rolfe, slides it across and Pina was there. And her shot was over the top. It's great work again. She actually is playing better from that deeper position. Rolfe getting into good positions. It's a good cross and should have been finished there by Pina. It's a great cross, in fact. Good positioning, but just not got the finish to go with it. Well, a sixth goal in six games for Alexia Puteas. Svava. He'll be breathing a sigh of relief because his team was absolutely nowhere near it until that point. Graham Hansel goes down again against. Carmona, and that's a nice ball forward to Gonzalez. And given away, and now Barcelona can try and drive forward. Graham Hansen is doing so. Here's Puteas. Pina's asking for it. stamp on the foot there of Lucia Rodriguez. Oh, do you know what? She actually <laughs> threw herself to the floor. <laughs> like, it's so frustrating, though, because, you know, y you've got to earn the right to get yourself back in the game, however good a team you are, and I'm, I'm not sure that Barcelona did that. And Real Madrid, all that work that they put in to get themselves 1-0 up, undid by a, yeah, our decision. Father. And also, I'm going to look at the substitutes as well, Pina, and, and I think that Madrid will have to be clever with the subs they put on. They've got more on the bench. They've probably got a stronger in terms of how they can change the game players that probably thought that they would play tonight but that's just when you put them on and whether it changes the balance of the team 
I'm starting to get frustrated as well. It was a bit of a late call, wasn't it, from the referee? And she's in good position as well, the referee, to give that. Pina. Pijaro. Leon. Torrejon was in space asking for it, but decided to go to Pateas. Here's Graham Hansen. Back to Pateas. Usually it's the right hand side for Barcelona. And they control the game using that right sided attack and just pin teams back and create space for others within it. Obviously, they're missing Caldente, which makes a difference, but they haven't got that going really at all. Graham Hansen. Ball in, Hermoso with a header. There's a difficult one. Hermoso needed to be a little bit more in front in the end. It, she had to guide it. Use her neck muscles to, as it's behind it. Barcelona have already committed seven fouls in this game, which is higher than their season average, so you can just sense how nervy this game really is and just how tight it is too. Taking off Sonoza. Graham Hansen. Puts it back looking for Alexia Putes, who was also leaving it for Rolfo. Del Castillo spotted it. That'll be a throw in to the home side. Actually worked the ball out from the defensive third well. Real Madrid, especially down that right-hand side, they know exactly where each other are, and Del Castillo there could have actually eased the pressure and gone down. She did get, I think she probably was fouled, but she wanted to get the ball up the pitch and an attack going. Gonzalez came all the way back to get that ball back. There's been a few outstanding performances from the Real Madrid team so far. Gonzalez is one of them. Well, Barcelona and Real Madrid didn't meet that long ago. It was the 16th of March that these two sides met. That was a pretty big defeat for Real Madrid then, 5-0 on the 13th. It was a win for Barcelona, which secured them the league title and almost Jenny. Lisa being caught out there. You talk about learning through failure or losing, and definitely Real Madrid have learned from that particular 5-0 defeat. And the way that they're approached. I think any team in Europe watching the first half performance, that's the way to play against it and put a Barcelona team on the back foot. Just also came from an offside position there, Gonzalez. Senorina Paredes getting ready for Barcelona. Shore things up at the back. Graham Hansen. Bon Mati. 
Harry Manson can turn. Looking to curl one into the top corner. Nebiera and Zanoso doing so much good work. Real Madrid and just protecting the back four. And when it does get into the back four, then they're defending well at the edge of the area as well. Teas. He had starting to charge forward quicker now. Barcelona. Well, they'll be hoping that Real Madrid tire the substitutions now that they've made. Well, here comes Elena Paredes for Barcelona. Andrea Pereira, the player to make way, and it will be a like for like swap. Looking to get around Rodriguez. Del Castillo has also come back to help. Been able to take that ball away from Rolfo. And now the changes are ready to come on as well for Real Madrid. Andres and Carolina Muller, the two players for Real Madrid who will be coming on. And with that comes Rocio Galvez. Ivana Andres takes her place. And Olga Carmona makes way. And Carolina Muller, goal scorer of Real Madrid's first goal in the opening 10 minutes of the first half. What a performance from her. She gave away the penalty. I think that's why she had a face like that. She'd done so well prior to that. She shouldn't have really had a penalty against her, but she's done some running. And just, like I say, that those changes are, are, are key. It can't disrupt the balance of the Real Madrid team, but. It, Used up a lot of energy in this game so far. Well, Caroline Muller, who's come on for Olga Carmona, scored a hat trick in the match day two win against Breda Blick. So she knows all too well about scoring in Champions League matches. She probably was disappointed that she didn't start the game as well. There's a two or three on that Real Madrid bench who would say the same thing. The attempts have started to go up now for Barcelona. They were kept at bay in the first half, but they started to open up and find their chances in the second half. The confidence has grown after Alexia Puteas was able to put away a second half penalty. First reaction to that was that it wasn't a foul. Again, Pateas gets the ball and she she lingers on it too what too much. There's two or three players. That's it. Oh yeah, that's, that's such a terrific game. Number three for Real Madrid. 
Mateus is having a word behind her hand. Interesting. I think it was a shirt pull, that's what the referee could see. Rolfer. And confirmation of the yellow card there for Teresa Abiera. Puteas looking to turn it. So that's a foul. Mazanosa who got the ball away. Well, play goes on. Del Castillo will try and pick this up, but important touch from Torrejon just to pass it into Panos. Stretch now as we're getting into the last 20 minutes or so, and this is where Barcelona will try and look to punish any of the gaps that Real Madrid may leave. Yeah, Leon. Zonosa, all over the top, looking here for Hester Gonzalez. Tell you what, she's been a complete thorn in the side of any of the defenders for Barcelona there. He's getting a little bit agitated and giving it the wrong way, I think. That's what the crowd are saying. It was kicked out by the Barcelona defender. And I think the referee, the assistant referee, has given it Barcelona's way. Well, you could hear the crowd as well, how much they were unhappy with that decision because it did come off Irene Paredes. Now Barcelona will come again. Rodriguez getting in the way. been a lot of unforced errors from this Barcelona team and we hardly ever see that and I think that this Real Madrid team has got right under the skin tonight Torrejon January, Barcelona completed the quadruple of the league title, National Cup, Women's Champions League and the Super Cup, becoming the first Spanish side ever to do so. They beat Atletico Madrid 7-0 in the final in their second win in the Supercopa. Another unforced error from a Barcelona player, kicks the ball out of play again. He's spotted a handball there from Gonzalez. Okay, to clear it again. Perhaps not too many complaints from her this time. Castillo. Piteas was fouled. Right in front of the referee, too. It's 
Svava with the ball away. Zonosa. Haite Oros. Barcelona starting to see the gaps opening up. Here's Bonmati. Graham Hansen will send it into the area. It hasn't happened much in terms of in a good good ball into the box to threaten Real Madrid because they've defended well and stopped those passing lines and they've been compact. But even then, at this stage, the quality of the ball into the box is not very good at all. And Barcelona. And they won't panic because they know so got time left in this first leg and then got a massive advantage at home with a crowd completely on their side, a huge crowd, and I think that they'll be able to do the job. But I mean, I think this is a surprise, the way that Real Madrid have played, how good they've been, how much energy that they've had. And Barcelona will not start the second leg the way that they started the first leg, that's for sure. Paredes, Torrejón, Graham Hansen, Bomati, back out to Leon and here's Rolf. Pina got a touch to it, but it will be left by. Peter, and that ball definitely did go out of play, and the referee spotted it. That's a good play down the left hand side from Peanut. Just was a little late with that touch. More changes for Real Madrid ready to come on. Kenti Robles. Nahikari Garcia. Good stop and block from Zonosa. Well, Gonzalez was complained that she was infringed there. Barcelona go on. Puteas tries to hit one. Peter in the way. And this time taken away by Zonosa. Now Real Madrid can try and come forward. Muller. A little bit scrappy. Changing of possession a few times there. But again, if it's not Zonosa, it's Javier. Moroso in that middle, they've played extremely well as the game's progressed all the way through. Rodriguez couldn't quite hold on to that ball. Quijada. Bonmati. Gives the opportunity then for Real Madrid to make their changes. Mighty Oroz comes off. Naikari Garcia comes on. And Lucia Rodriguez, who's had a fantastic game for Real Madrid, is the next player to make way for Kenti Robles. Torrell's just trying to keep that level of intensity up with these changes. Yeah, these are good substitutes in terms of the quality of the players coming on, that they've got to step up to the speed of the game straight away. There's another player who you would have expected to start. Real Madrid.
Graham Hansen. Torejon through to Bonmati. Graham Hansen looking to weave away past Svava. Able to get a shot through. Great play. Play on there. Under pressure again. Barcelona edging Real Madrid in terms of possession as well. They have been under pressure in this second half, Real Madrid. And now there's a bit of space opening up here. Graham Hansen with the ball through. Bon Mati was lifting as she took a shot. And I expected Graham Hansen to just go further. She had a lot of space to get herself further into the box. Bon Mati a couple of times now. Ball sailed over the bar, but she had a lot of space there. Couldn't pick out her own player, but forced to bomb at it. Her attempts are starting to creep up to Barcelona. Here's Hermoso. And they stayed really deep then, Real Madrid, when the goal kick was kicked out, and it just allowed Hermoso then to just be stood in lots of space, not offside. It's not often he has to earn his money like this in terms of decision making within games. But he doesn't like it. Well, he took charge of this Barcelona side at the start of this season. He was an assistant to the former manager, Luis Cortez. He came into a fully formed Barcelona squad. And a very smooth transition from one manager to the next. Claudia Pina, she's got plenty of options, decides to go for Graham Hansen. Gets away from Svava. Now Bonmati. And Pina! 2-1 to Barcelona! They were knocking on the door for much of the second half. They found their confidence after Alexia Putea scored the penalty. They've come from behind. And now they lead 2-1. A terrific finish from Pina there and just completely overloading They're just running out of steam Real Madrid Graham Hansen just picks the right pass in the end comes back to Pina what a terrific finish that is and they, they try to hold out and have more of the possession in this second half more of the chances just needed that clinical edge and that's exactly what Pina had her first goal in the Champions League, but back-to-back -back goals. Scoring last week in the Cup, she scored again today in what could be a very important goal in this first leg of a quarter-final tie in the Champions League. Barcelona have the lead. Heartbreak for Real Madrid, who've been in this game all the way up until right at the end. There's still 10 minutes or so left for them to try and get the equaliser back. Müller. Vieira. Peter. Ball at the top looking for Gonzalez. And she's done well since she's come on. You know, made a difference. Well, picked up here by Del Castillo, able to cross it through, but there wasn't anyone there to get on the end of it. Robles picks this up. Ball in, looking for Gonzalez again. Del Castillo is there on the edge of the area. Graham Hansen. So Nossa. And Real Madrid is saying that it was dribbled out of play. It's just 
losing a bit of control of the game now. The referee, the assistant referee says that it hasn't gone over the line and you tend to think that that's the right decision. Real yeah, Madrid players that frustrated to just take it out on Guijara in the middle of the pitch. Oh, it, it had gone out, hadn't it? Well, the assistant referee's looking. And give him the benefit of the doubt then to start with. It's just small decisions that make a difference in games. It just adds to the frustration, makes it more difficult for the referee to deal with as a game. Ingrid Engen getting ready to come on for the final five minutes or so of this game. And here is that goal again from Claudia Pina. Probably the only time in the game that Abiera has been second to a ball. Yellow card for Esther Gonzalez. And just losing the cool a bit. Real Madrid, you can understand the frustration and find themselves behind. It's been a really tight game all the way through, but just a little bit of class at the end from Barcelona. Matana Bonmati. The player who will be replaced by Ingrid Engen, the Norwegian international. You have to say, Real Madrid will feel really hard done by with that result been probably one of the tightest tightest affairs that they've had against this Barcelona side the penalty decision they'll look back on that and when they watch it they won't be able to believe that the penalty was given particularly the referee had a good chance to look at it and the VAR did as well Big decisions like that, big moments, change games, and it just gave Barcelona a confidence to get them back in their stride and keep the momentum with them and eventually get that second goal. Free kick then to Real Madrid. Javier will take this. Ball comes in, a little bit too much of a loop through, and Sandra Panos was straight to it. Out by Suave. What do you think this will do for Real Madrid? Because they will surely give them confidence going into next week's second leg tie, despite the fact that they are currently losing 2 1. Graham Hansen. And just need to make sure that they don't concede again and undo all that hard work. So you can just keep a difference of one goal going into the second leg. I would expect that they could play like this again, but it would be so much more difficult, I think, away from home. Third corner of the evening then for Barcelona. I'm happily on to take this. A very crowded six-yard box. More delivery comes in, not quite cleared away, punched away in the end by Miso and over the top onto the roof of the net. Oh, it's terrific reaction there from Misa. Lots of bodies in there. And they ended up in the back of a net, but she reacted first. It's difficult for a goalkeeper in those situations.
More defending to do for Real Madrid. They're checking for another penalty here. Yeah. It was quite the melee in the box, wasn't it? Yeah, I'd be interested to see which bit they were looking at. Well, they can go on. No penalty. Corner comes in. Piteas was lifting up. Zornosa. throw from Aria Pina headed away there by Aviero Aviero <laughs> 15 seconds to go until we find out how much time will be added on delivery comes in up to Napoli on. Four minutes of time added on. Four minutes for Real Madrid to see if they can find themselves an equalizer and respond. To Barcelona's second goal from Claudia Pina. I think the way that the game's going, that they just need to make sure that they don't concede again. Real Madrid. Keep it tight at the back. It's coming to a pressure from Barcelona as this second half has gone on. Puteas. Taken away, and Muller will send this ball upfield, but only as far as Leon. And that sort of one and two, pa two touch passing that Barcelona just did then in that attacking phase, Pateas, it's, it's hardly happened at all. And that is due to the way that they've been pressed and harried by Real Madrid, particularly in that first half, forcing them to make mistakes. Pina. Well, had not been having a, a good game and she made the difference. Free kick then to Barcelona. The dying moments of this game. The first leg of the quarter final in the Champions League. It will be Napoli on to take this. It was a decent ball into the box as well. Kept alive too. Good save from Misa. Father, ball over the top. Kept alive here by Gonzalez. Del Castillo stays up on her feet. Tries to get the shot in in the end. Easy for Sandra Panos. She wasn't as far as for the line. Castillo would have wanted at that particular stage, but probably the better in mean, putting the ball into the box or running further with it. And they're still showing really good glimpses, aren't they, going forward, Real Madrid? Oh, 
Now Mosso. Over the top here for Giharo. Now Alexia Puteas could make it 3-1. And she does. Her second goal of the evening. Barcelona extend their lead. And heartbreak for Real Madrid. It was a perfectly executed finish from Alexia Puteas, who just keeps on adding to her goal tally. And the game has just become more and more stretched, hasn't it, in the last 20 minutes or so. And just caught out, out quite out of shape at the back there, Real Madrid. And as soon as Puteas gets it in front of goal there, there's only one outcome, one on one. She knows exactly what she's going to do. And that's hard on Real Madrid, but that just shows the quality of Barcelona and just keeping on going. And with that was the final action of this game. Real Madrid on top in the first half, but it was Barcelona who won the second half and inevitably won the game. They had to fight back from coming a goal down in the first half. Alexia Puteas able to find the equaliser from the spot. VAR had to get involved to give Barcelona that penalty, but Real Madrid just couldn't find their way through. Claudia Pina came on as a second half substitute. Her shot from the centre of the box down into the bottom corner, got past Misa and made it 2-1 to put Barcelona in the lead. And then just to make things comfortable for Barcelona as they head into next week's second leg tie, Alexia Puteas able to make it 3-1 with a fantastic, cool, calm, collected finish. Full-time Real Madrid one, Barcelona three. And you have to say, heartbreak for Real Madrid, Lucy, because they were in it all the way up until about the 80th minute. Yeah, I don't, I don't think the scoreline is a true reflection of how the game went, the ebb and flow of the game. And I think the penalty decision which was one of the most ridiculous penalty decisions I've seen and I think that Barcelona don't need any help and I think that just edged them forward the belief that they could actually get something they knew they weren't playing very well but that if they kept going they could get something from the game and that really has to, probably has to hurt more than getting beat 5-0 that because Madrid probably know that they could have got through this game with it being one all or maybe just losing 2-1 but I'm not so sure that they deserve to be on the wrong end of a 3-1 scoreline. How much can they take away from the performance that they put in going into next week's second leg time? Yeah, lots. You know, lots about the, the way that they pressed. I think Barcelona will be probably more ready for them next week in a, in a really advantageous position being 3-1 up. I think it would be very, very difficult for Real Madrid, but it always was at the start of this tie. It was always going to be difficult, but I think that people look at the scoreline and think, well, typical Barcelona, but that's got to hurt really got to hurt because they're probably the better team in terms of the way they pressed and the way that they played and Barcelona just showed some class at the end. Well, Barcelona are able to come back from a goal down. It was Real Madrid who were on top in the first half, but their attempt started to trick on and Barcelona with plenty of attempts and they were able to get the goals in the end. Full-time, Real Madrid won, Barcelona three.